Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we will be continuing our series where we are looking at some of the newer features and productivity pack tools available in Civil 3D 2016. In this session, we'll explore the Extract Corridor Feature Lines tool. Now, before I get into feature lines a whole lot, let's talk about a change that was made to feature lines in Civil 3D 2016. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a small proposed parking lot design. And the majority of the geometry that we're looking at here was created as feature lines. In fact, all of this geometry was placed within the same site. Just for a second, I'm going to select one of these feature lines. We'll come over to the Properties palette, and we can see that it's placed in Site P-Lot. Let's click in this view on the right. In the 3D view, if I orbit the drawing, we can see this line segment crossing the parking lot entrance exists below that curb and gutter geometry. Let me press escape and I'll click back in this view on the left. Let's assume this line represents a ditch or a culvert of some sort. At any rate, I'd like to convert this line into a feature line. To do that, I'll come up to the Create Design panel. I'll open the Feature Line menu and I'll choose Create Feature Lines from Objects. I'll select this line segment and I'll press Enter. Right here we can see the site where this feature line will be placed. The same site used by the parking lot geometry. Let's assume I didn't notice that. I'm going to come down and give this feature line a name. I'll call it Ditch. Here I can select a style. Grading Ditch is fine. I'm going to accept the rest of the default settings and I'll click OK. And notice what happens. If I come over here and orbit the drawing, we can see that since these feature lines share the same site, they interact. That is, they cross at a common elevation. This is obviously incorrect. Let's come back over to this view on the left. Now, this is kind of an extreme example, but this does happen. When we create feature lines, we have to be aware of the sites they're in, such that we can avoid any unwanted interaction. Well, in Civil 3D 2016, we now have the ability to create sightless feature lines. This means we can create as much three-dimensional geometry as we want without fear of interaction. Let's take a look. First, I'll select this feature line, and I'm going to come up to the Modify panel. I'll expand this, and I'll choose Move to Site. Notice there's a new None option. I'll make sure that's selected, and I'll click OK. This corrects my problem over here. Let me press Escape to deselect. Just for a second, let's assume we were creating a new feature line. I'm going to open the menu again, and I'll choose Create Feature Line. We can find that None option here in the menu. Let's close this. In the event you create a sightless feature line, you will find those on the Prospector tab within this new Feature Lines group. Let me click to select it. Right here we can see the ditch feature line that we just created. So, in Civil 3D 2016, we now have sightless feature lines. Let's take a look at another drawing. Here I have some geometry that represents a proposed corridor design. This is a two-lane road that has a widening. Let me drag this down. We can see it tapers back to the original two-lane width. Let's say that I would like to extract feature lines from this corridor. Feature lines like this can often be thought of as proposed brake lines. If a contractor responsible for automated machine guidance has ever asked you to provide proposed brake lines, you know that in the past we've had to extract these feature lines one at a time. Now, using the new Extract Corridor Feature Lines tool, we can extract these feature lines in bulk. Let's take a look. I'm going to zoom out and we'll center this corridor on screen. To find the new command, I'll come over to the Toolbox tab. I will then click to expand the Civil 3D 2016 Productivity Pack 2 group. And then within Corridor Feature Lines, I will double click to launch the Extract Corridor Feature Lines command. From the command line, I can select how much of the corridor I would like to extract feature lines from. We have all, by regions, or within polygon. For right now, I'll choose by regions. I will then place my cursor in this region and click. I'll select this region and this one. Basically, I'm selecting the entire corridor. I will then press Enter. In this dialog box, I can see a listing of all of the feature lines available for extraction. Fortunately, they are organized very well. Let me click to collapse the tree. Here we can see all of the point codes that are used to create feature lines. Let's say I'd like to extract the back of curb feature lines from this corridor. To do that, I will click to deselect all the categories, and then I will select the two back of curbs. Let me drag this down. Notice we can see the back of curb feature lines on the left and right side. Let me expand the left side for a second. As I select these, we can see those feature lines highlighted in the drawing. Let me collapse this category. I'll open up this one. We can see the feature lines on the right side. Notice these are disjointed because of the break in the regions. Let me close up this category. I'll push this up. 
In the lower left corner, I can toggle this button to join feature lines in adjacent regions. We'll go ahead and do that. Using this column, I can select a site for my extracted feature lines. None is fine in this case. The next column can be used to assign a style. In this one, I can select an object layer. I can even assign a pay item if I want to. Just for a second, let's take a look at the settings. Using this button, I can ensure the feature lines remain dynamic to the corridor. Here, I can apply smoothing. I'm not going to do that in this case. I can give the feature lines unique names. I'm going to come over and click the template button. I will then press delete to remove the current naming convention. I'd like to name these feature lines based on the corridor feature code. Let me insert that. I'll add a dash and then we'll add the feature side. I'll insert that. We'll put in a dash and then I'll add the next counter number. I will then come down and click OK. Notice we can assign a code set style as well. This is used to help automate the style assignment from this column. Autodesk working is fine in this case. Let me go ahead and click OK, and then I'll choose Extract. So the back of curb feature lines have been extracted. They're a little hard to see with the other geometry. Just for a second, I'm going to open the Layers panel. I'll click the Layer Freeze button, and then I will click to freeze my corridor and this proposed surface. I'll press Escape when finished. Let me zoom in. Right here, I have one of my dynamic back of curb feature lines. Notice how it is joined together through the region. I can also see my feature line here on the other side. These entities represent the targets that are used for the widening. Let me zoom out. I'll pan the drawing over for a second. Let's test the dynamic aspect of these feature lines. I'm going to choose my target. I'll click the grip and I'll pull this out. I'll press escape when finished. I will then go to the prospector tab and we'll rebuild the corridor. Here from the corridor group, I will right click on my corridor and I'll choose rebuild automatic. When I do, watch the feature lines on screen. You can see how that updated. Let me click the target. I'll drag this back a little bit. Once again, it updates. Let me press escape. Let's try something else. I'm going to select both of these feature lines and I'll remove them from the drawing. I'll just press my delete key. Let's bring back the corridor model. I'll go back to the layers panel and I'm going to choose the layer previous button to turn everything back on. I will then zoom out and I'm going to create a polygon. I'll launch the polyline command. I'll turn off my running object snaps momentarily and then I will create a shape that spans a couple of regions. I'll hit C for close and I'll press enter. Historically, if we create a feature line that's dynamic to the corridor model, that feature line had to run the full length of the corridor. Now, using this new tool, I can create dynamic feature lines that represent a small portion of the corridor. And I can do that using a closed shape. Let's try it out. I'm going to zoom in. We'll go back to the Toolbox tab, and I will double-click to relaunch the Extraction command. I'm going to extract feature lines within a polygon. I will select this polygon, and I'll press Enter. In this case, I will extract all of the feature lines using the default settings, and I'll choose Extract. I will then hide my geometry again. We'll go back to the Layers panel and I'll choose Freeze. I'll hide the corridor and the proposed surface and I'll press Escape when finished. So in this case we have partial feature lines yet they are still dynamic to the corridor model. Just to test things I will select my target. I'll click this grip and I'll pull it down. Notice the change. I can even edit the shape. I can pull this over. Let's pull this target back out. And you can see how the feature lines remain tied to the corridor as well as this boundary. Now that I have these feature lines, I can use them as break lines in a proposed surface. I could even create grading objects from these if I wanted to. Note that if you wanted to use one of these feature lines in a grading object, it must be placed within a site. As you can see, Civil 3D 2016 gives us a lot more control over our feature lines. Using the Sightless option or the new Extraction tool, we have greater flexibility when it comes to grading or maintaining dynamic relationships within a model. Would you like to explore more Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.